In our previous video, we used a try-catch block around a, an input data prompt to validate that the user entered valid data. If the user didn't enter valid data, we prompted the user again. That follows under our very first bullet point here, which is, can you handle an exception locally? If you can, use a try-catch. In this video, we're going to take a look at the next two best practices. If you cannot handle an exception locally, throw it back to the calling layer. And then, if you're in the UI layer and you cannot handle it, then inform the user of the error, but don't give any details. So we're going to take a look at those two scenarios in this video. So, if you take a look at our program to this point, what we're doing when we run is we're prompting the user for some information, and if the user enters bad data, then we keep prompting the user to enter good data until the user does enter good data. Okay, and then we enter a 10 and 10,000, and no, and distance to travel 100, reimbursement rate 44, and we do not want another trip. So we see that we have a bit of a validation loop built in. Now the trick is, what if something goes wrong? What if the user accidentally starts our program and doesn't want to continue through the program? Or what if there's maybe something wrong with the keyboard? Maybe it's a keyboard that's mapped differently and the user is unable to enter the correct number for some reason. We should give the user a way to get out of the program and allow it to stop. In other words, there's nothing more annoying than starting a program. It keeps prompting you to do something and you can't get out of it, kind of like what a virus does when, or, or when you go to a website there or some kind of mobile app that really wants you to buy something and it doesn't let you close out of it. So I'm going to change the show message, message dialog here to a show, uh, show confirm dialog. And we know that that's going to take a few more parameters. So show confirm dialog. We'll just take a look at the at the uh, Java doc here. So the way we've done it will work. We could leave it with that. We can also add a title and an option type. Um, I think we'll do that. So we'll go with the title, option type, and message type. Okay. So title. I'm also going to change the message to, do you want to try again? Because what we're going to do is we're going to give the user a yes and a no option. Uh, the yes option will allow the user to try again. The no option will break out of this loop. Okay, so do you want to try again? Okay, then title, invalid input. Okay, and then we had message type, J option, pane. And we'll say yes, no option. Actually, I'm sorry, that's option type, which is the last argument. It's, no, 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 that's right, that's the option type. Message type, J option pane. And we're going to say, I want to say error message on that because that is an error condition. Okay, and then terminate with the semicolon. Okay, so I'm going to save this and I'm going to put my cursor on show confirm dialog. And I'm going to say right click, introduce, or let's say refactor, and then introduce and variable, Alt Shift B. Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to say, it's going to give us a variable where we'll save what, you, what, what option the user clicked on, either a yes or a no. So show confirm dialog is going to show a yes or no button, and then this try again variable is going to hold the result of what the user clicked on, either yes or no. Let's just try it out for the moment, make sure that everything works as we expect. So run. Okay, enter gallons of gas, we say 10. Miles per gallon, type in the word 10. You did not enter a valid number, do you want to try again? So do you see how our title appears here? the invalid input, we get the X, and then we get the yes or the no. At this point, we're not doing anything with the yes or the no. We just want to confirm that those buttons appear. Let's go ahead and choose yes, and it should prompt us again. This time we enter valid data, and we'll keep entering valid data as we let the program run. Do you want to create another vehicle? No. Distance to travel 100. Reimbursement rate 44. We don't want to enter another. Okay, so now what we need to do is decide what to do when the user chooses no. I don't want to try again. I'm going to remove final from this. Shouldn't be a problem. And let me zoom this up so we can look at it in high definition. Okay, so I'm going to say if 
try again, equal, equal. Remember, double equal is the comparison operator in Java. J option pane, no underscore option. Okay, I'm going to say we are here because the user does not want to keep trying. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to say throw new exception and we'll say user has exceeded the number of attempts for valid data and terminate with the semicolon. So what a throw does is that means we don't want to finish up with the rest of this method. We're going to terminate right here and not do anything beyond this line. And because we're not going to finish this method, that means we're not going to be able to return this value down here. So we need to tell the method that called us that we're not going to finish this method. Now, if we're going to tell the method that calls us that we could throw an exception, we have to declare the exception to be thrown. In other words, if you look up here at the method signature, you see this throws keyword here. That tells us what type of exceptions can be thrown. As a matter of fact, we no longer will throw the number format exception because we've just handled that right here. But nonetheless, if I'm going to throw a new type of exception, and in this case I am, I'm throwing an exception just with a capital E, then I need to add it to this list up above where I declare which exceptions can be thrown for this method. So I'll say exception, just high level exception. Okay, and now I'm going to save. And now let's scroll up a little bit. And what you'll see is anywhere I'm calling that method, now I have a red line because it says unreported exception exception must be cut or declared to be thrown. Okay, so it's saying that calling this method could result in an exception being thrown. I need you to decide how to handle it. So what I can do then is I can wrap a try catch around here now because now I'm handling a checked exception. Try and then catch exception E. Okay, and then I might say J option pane dot show message dialog null comma uh, closing, uh, let's say unable to acquire valid data and then program terminating. Okay. Uh, something like that, and then what we can do is we can do system.exit0. That's generally not a good idea because that just forces the program to crash. Uh, we could just say return. That's considered a little bit dirty as well to add a return in the middle of a method, but nonetheless, sometimes that'll work. The other thing we could do is rethrow the exception again. Um, we'll go ahead and, and keep it as it is like this. I'm going to borrow this try catch block and I'm going to paste it other under our other call. And you see my curlies are way out of balance now, so shift alt f. Now, one interesting thing is take a look at this. Do you see my vehicle that set miles per gallon? Do you see how this is redlining now? Well, int miles per gallon, we can only use that if this line executed successfully. And if we're here at line 57, then that line did not execute successfully. It skipped down to the catch block. So what I need to do is move this assignment up here into the try block. And again, do the same thing for odometer, just like we see here. Okay, now let's save. Let's run the program one more time. Okay, first time. I'll go ahead and enter valid data, 10. I mean, I'll eventually enter valid data. So you didn't enter a good number. Do you want to try again? Yes, 10. Enter odometer, 10,000. You didn't enter a valid number. Try again, yes, and 10,000. Do you want to enter another vehicle? No. Distance to travel, 100. Reimbursement rate, 44 cents. Don't create another trip. And we see that the program terminates normally. Let me run one more time. Uh, this time I'll enter invalid data and I'll choose no, meaning I want to terminate the program. Gallons of gas, 10. Miles per gallon, the word 10. You didn't enter a valid number. The word 10 again. You didn't enter a valid number. Do you want to try again? This time I'm going to click on no. No should throw the exception back to the calling method, which will give me the error that says 
I'm unable to acquire valid data, shutting down the program. Unable to acquire valid data, program terminating, I choose OK and notice that I don't get prompted for anything else. So by using this uh, show confirm dialog, it gives the user an opportunity to jump out of the method. And we jump out of the method, we terminate it unsuccessfully by using this throw block. So that's how to throw an exception in Java. In our next video, we'll take a look at the finally block, and we will also take a look at creating our own exception type. We'll see you then.